Light does a lot of things, but we know two things for sure. It creates texture and dimension, so let's talk about it. Photoflix is giving away a great starlight lighting kit this month, so get over to theslandlens.com and sign up so you can win that kit. Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on The Slant Lens, we're going to do our next segment in the Laws of Light series. We're going to talk about dimension and texture. You know, I haven't said this enough in this series, but the reason we talk about all these principles, the reason we're talking about light and what light will do in an image or in a video is because we're trying to take a three-dimensional experience and turn it into a one-dimensional experience. So as you look at something in one dimension, you want to feel the three-dimensionality of the experience. So light has got to create dimension. It's got to give you a sense of depth. It's got to give you texture in order to see and to feel the texture that you would see in a three-dimensional experience. But in a one-dimensional world, light is going to have to communicate that. So let's get started on texture and dimension. If we're going to look at texture and dimension, then we have to understand camera view. Camera view is the line from the camera to the subject matter. The closer you get your light to camera view, the less dimension and the less texture you're going to have. So let's move that light right straight to camera view. Now remember, camera view is not just a vertical line up and down, it's a straight line. So the closer the, the light is up and down, side to side to camera view, the flatter the light is going to be on her face. It's almost impossible to get the light directly at camera view because it's going to be in front of the camera. We could put it above it slightly and that would help, but Jordan's helping me out here. So there's camera view. If he raises this light up now, and gets it up higher on her face, he's already moved it off camera view. He's moved it up. And as it's moved up there about uh, 35 degrees, he's now given a beautiful light on her face. She's got a nice drop shadow, get that nice butterfly light on her face. He's moved off camera view up higher and we've created dimension. No longer are her cheeks flat, her cheeks now have highlight or have shadows and highlights. And so we have a very beautiful uh, look at her face. So if he takes this light from above camera view to below camera view, it still has texture, it still has dimension because there are shadows off her nose. There are definitely shadows being created here. It, of course, communicates more of a horror or scary light on her face, but it's not on camera view any longer. So if we come back up to that 45 above, most people start out with their camera view here and off about 35 or 45 degrees uh, off from the left of camera. So move it over to there and put it back on our stand there and we can bring that light back up. Most people work in this area from zero to 45 degrees, mostly because it's just easy. That's where you can put the light. You put it on your camera, you put it out on the floor, you move it around that area, but it's very close to you. I think something magical happens when you move the light past 90 degrees or at least past 45. So bring this light around as we go around into somewhere into there. Now we start to do what's called a split light on her face. We are getting absolutely dimension we're seeing the highlights, we're getting to turn, but if she'll turn her face just slightly into the camera, turn a little more, and look at the light there, and look that direction. Now we get a beautiful light on her face. I think it's one of the prettiest places to put a light. It's just past 45. You can even go a little further with it there, around. And now we get a gorgeous light on her face. Once the light moves beyond 90 degrees in the image and comes behind your talent, there's all kinds of dimension. There's all kinds of texture it creates in the back of the talent, but your camera can't see it. It's all happening back here. It's just away from the camera. So texture and dimension are always there. It's just you've got to get them into the place where it will allow your camera to see them. That means when you're outside, you can't move the sun, you can't move that building that's reflect reflecting the light in, but you can move your talent. You can rotate your talent. You've got to create a dance between what's the background and what's my talent and what do I do to move her into position so I can get a nice light on her face and let the background look beautiful as well. Okay, now we've lost a lot of dimension in this side of her face. There is no, it's all shadow. We've lost dimension in her hair. She doesn't separate from the background. The first thing we can do to bring some of that dimension back is to add a fill card. As we bring this fill card in, it's going to create, start to create dimension once again. We'll see her hair starts to reveal itself. We'll start to see shadows start to open up. Sometimes this isn't enough, you know, depending on how close we can get this to her. Getting pretty close. And that starts to open that, that up. Start, that starts to reveal the dimension in her face, give us some line on the back of her hair. If I need to, I can turn on another light. I'm going to bounce this one out of the ceiling. And try to keep it off from her. 
The dangerous thing about a second light, you don't want it to be uh, something that's looking directly at her because now we have two key lights, we create two sets of shadows, and it looks very unnatural to the eye. You want to have one key light, one set of shadows. The safest thing to do is to use a reflector which pushes the light back in to her face. Uh, we can use a secondary source, but in this case, I'm going to bounce it into the ceiling, which is going to give us the dimension of the side of her face, but not create a second set of shadows on her face. So there's a beginning of dimension, and now let's move on to texture. In this example, we're going to take a look at how we create texture, moving the light off from camera view. So the light right now is dead on camera view. We're looking at this piece of paper that's all crumpled, and it's absolutely flat. So as you move the cat light around, moving around there, Jordan, you see how the texture starts to just jump off from this page. And all of a sudden this turns into a mountainous landscape. It's a fabulous example of the light goes around, goes to almost a 90 degree angle, and now we have incredible texture. As it comes back to the camera, and it flattens all that texture out, and the texture's gone. So if he moves down off from camera view, we're gonna get that same texture starts to create, be created. We get all these great shadows that fall up we get a fabulous look. So if it comes up from camera view, again, we create great texture on the piece of paper. As it gets higher and higher, we get that sense of shadows on the, on the page. So texture is a matter of placement of light compared to camera view. You get dimension as you move the light off from uh, camera view. You also get more texture. So if you're photographing a product, something you want to see texture in, you're not going to want that light to be close to camera view. You're going to want that light around and away from camera view. If you're photographing a person, uh, somebody has very deep wrinkles and they don't want to see this, and I shot a lot of celebrities for NBC, a lot of older celebrities at NBC, and they absolutely loved light that was pretty flat. Well, the flatter the light gets, it's the closer to, to the camera angle of view. So I would get that light above the camera, down a little bit, then I'd put a, a reflector underneath, and it would soften up the shadows and just look fabulous. If you're working with someone who's has very weather beaten skin and you want to see all those wrinkles, then move the light away from camera. Get it off from camera view. You're going to reveal all those wrinkles. It's going to be a great, fabulous black and white portrait because you need that kind of contrast to be able to communicate. So away from camera view reveals the wrinkles or the texture in a person's face. So there's a look at texture and dimension. I hope that'll help you understand a little better on where you should place your lights and be brave. Get past that 90 degrees, get lights a little more from the behind so that it gives you more interest, more dimension. Uh, learn to fill the dimension and create even deeper dimension as you fill that dimension and create a three-dimensional experience in a one-dimensional world. That's our goal, three-dimensional experience in a one-dimensional world. So keep those cameras rolling and keep on clicking. If you have ever been interested in stop motion photography, then I've got the perfect thing for you. Trisha Zemp teamed up with us to create a download called Stop Motion Basics for Beginners. Get over to thuslenlens.com Get your download today, it'll answer all your questions. Make sure you subscribe to The Slanted Lens and sign up for our newsletter and join our Facebook group. We got a lot going on over here.